So, Mr. Su, Kung Fu, uh, when did it start and, and why? The uh, art uh, of uh, Kung Fu never started as Kung Fu as such. It probably started some five to six thousand years ago as a means of self-preservation, uh, probably with the Ice Age and using clubs and things like this, or stones. Then slowly it developed into a means of being able to use the arms and legs as a means of protection. Eventually, in actual fact, some techniques came over from uh, India as well. Uh, Bodhidharma came in, and they set up a school in the Shaolin Monastery in northern China. And there they laid down certain techniques and movements on which the whole of styles of Kung Fu have been based ever since. Because there's a hard and a soft Kung Fu, isn't there? And the hard is, is, it was in northern China. That's right. And the soft in southern China. That's right. And what's the basic difference then? Well, this is due to envir environment mainly. In the north there's mountains and deserts. And so therefore it's very hard terrain and uh, they can um, move quickly on their feet. So in the north they use more feet than they do the hands. In the south, of course, you have paddy fields and the sampans. And so the legs are used to hold their balance in slippery circumstances. And so we, u we use more handwork in the south than we do with feet. Although, of course, you get a, a, a nice balance in actual fact by in the soft styles of being able to use them all. Now, can you tell me the difference to a layman between, uh, shall we say, karate and kung fu? I mean, how would I, how would I spot the difference? Well, um, karate is uh, a copy of the Chinese hard styles, and we call this um, stop and start techniques. They um, stop, lock their muscles uh, for that split second, execute a a technique, then unlock the muscles and joints, and then start moving again. Mm. Uh, the Chinese arts are very, very soft. They flow all the time. They are completely relaxed. We at no time lock the joints or the muscles of the body, and so you're completely relaxed physically, but also mentally, mentally and spiritually. Can you explain to me, Mr. Su, what what, what, is, <clears throat> what is meant by inner power? Because I gather that's very important for Kung Fu. Inner power, in actual fact, is the power that we use rather than physical muscular strength. An inner power is the power that a baby uses when it grips your finger when it's very young. It, it, it's not old enough to develop muscles, mm. and, but yet when it grips your finger, it is very strong, well, it feels strong. Could you demonstrate what you mean by that, uh, perhaps with Doug? Uh, yes. Doug, Doug could, you, could you join us over here? Oh. Um, for instance, uh, it is obvious that Doug has got more power in his body than I have in my little finger. And so in actual fact, he can push as hard as he likes in actual fact, and without any strain whatsoever, I could not only hold him, but break his balance. Again, if, uh, if I use physical strength to stop being lifted, and I go 11 stone, he can lift me fairly easy. But if I don't use physical strength, this, this is what actually happens. <laughs> and he, he's really trying, isn't he? He's really trying. Let's, let's, let's see the chair. Done? Again, if I oppose force with force, in other words, I try to prevent him by sheer strength, I get pushed. Mm -hmm. But if I don't oppose him with strength, then you see what happens. There. Now, I'm just going to... Well, I'm going to come in here because um, you, you've come together and, and some viewers might think, well, there might be an act going on, so just let me Would try. Would you like to try? <laughs> all right. Okay, now, first of all, see if you can push me. You can. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. Now try. And again, without any strength or... Now that's quite, oh, you. that's quite extraordinary. What are you doing that I, can't, that I can't push you? Well, in this particular case, I'm throwing your energy back into yourself. So in actual fact... But all you seemed to do that was different was to put your, your thumbs on my... Well, in actual fact, all I'm doing is, is holding you and making contact. So in actual fact, uh, the force that you're using is thrown back against yourself. So you're literally pushing against yourself and not pushing against me. Which is pretty self-defeating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Now, another claim that's made is that, unlike karate, that this is not an aggressive um, sport or art, uh, and that in its purest form, it's, it's turned the other cheek. Is that right? Completely. Self-humility is the first essence, uh, plus complete control of one's physical body, mental and spiritual body. Mr. Sue, I wonder, could we see Doug attack you as if he's going to mug you or something and see how you handle the situation? Uh, yes, and, and what would you like, a punch or grip or something? Yeah, a punch-up. All right. A uh, Saturday night punch-up. Well, uh, probably the, uh, the essence is uh, possibly if he gripped my collar, and, uh, which is typical from a, a pub to, uh, to, to do something like that. All I need to do is turn my body into, and take him out sideways. <laughs>
You see, with no effort. Or a stranglehold. You see, I, I literally need to do anything. Because all I need to do is tuck him over and hold him down. Or another one, I can do the same thing. If he's a stranglehold, all I do is turn him away, give his arms a cuddle, and he's, he's gone. <laughs> Uh, minimum force, min min minimum energy and uh, relaxation. Hold round the waist. I mean, uh, all oh. you have to do is just tap and he's gone. May I, may I just try? Um... Yes, uh, again. That's right, yeah. All we do, look at your arm. You can't do anything with the arms. I've broken away from the grip. And now, in actual fact, I've got two arms, two legs, against pose which your two legs are tied up, your two hands are tied up, you're helpless. And yet I've got all my weapons. Could you let go? Could I let go? Yeah. Thank you. Let me, let me just try from behind. That's right. right. Well, again, very easily. You see, I literally don't have to do anything to take you under control. No, you don't. <laughs> well, that, that's absolutely fascinating. That's, um, that's again, you, without using force against force. Yes. If I used force, I, would, I couldn't have broken out. See. You see, to watch a fight going on, um, it looks pretty aggressive, but you say that the, the prime aim is humility, is self-control and humility. Exactly. But this uh, fight was an act of was put on normally. We never spar as such. There are no sparring battles because uh, in, in act of it was banned in China over 150 years so, ago. So the perfect kung fu is when two people walk away from each other, uh, neither striking each other. Exactly. Yes, this so, is the truth. So really, <laughs> an empty studio would be the perfect kung fu. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it is a way of life. Uh, never opposing force with force. In other words, giving way to force at all times. And uh, this is, in every aspect of training, this rule is uh, the number one. Mm. All for that, Mr. Sue. Right, but just